At Oxford University, Dr. Richard Dawkins is professor of public understanding of science. The author of several best-selling books, he is also one of Darwin's foremost defenders. I suppose the great mystery of life is to explain where the complexity of life came from. Another way of talking about complexity is to say information. Information is a kind of measure of complexity. And the complexity of life is not just plain complexity, it's also adapted. Living things not only are complicated, but they do things, they survive. They do everything in their power to survive, and they look as though they are beautifully designed machines, machines designed to survive. But not all experts agree that the complexity of life could have come about by the accumulation of lots of lucky changes and a growing number of dissenters are questioning Darwin's theory. Molecular biologist Dr. Michael Denton is a senior research fellow at the University of Otago in New Zealand. He claims Darwinism is a theory in crisis, which assumes the so-called fact of evolution, yet cannot explain the supposed transformation of simple life forms into complex creatures by random processes. I don't think the Darwinian theory of evolution is anything like the established fact that many biologists claim. I call it the great uh, cosmological or cosmogenic myth of the 20th century. And that's a view I still, uh, still maintain. I think nothing uh, I've seen in the biological sciences, no advances in science that I've seen in the last 20 years, um, in any way have changed my mind in any way about that fundamental, that fundamental belief of mine that uh, Darwinism is an inadequate explanation. Darwin's ideas are now conventional wisdom, and it's considered an established fact that simple life forms evolved over millions of years of gradual change into all the complexity and diversity of life that we know today, without the design of a sovereign creator. And of course, the puzzling thing is, where does all this complexity come from? Where does all this information come from? It cannot come about by chance. It's absolutely inconceivable that you could get something as complicated as a bird and, and as well designed as a bird or a human or a hedgehog coming about by chance. That's absolutely out. Because to get from nothing, from no complexity, no information, to it, the extreme complexity of a modern living thing in one step of chance couldn't possibly happen. That would be like throwing a dice a thousand times and getting a, a six every single time. It's out of the question. But if you allow a little bit of luck in any one generation, and then a little bit of luck in the next generation, a little bit of luck in the next generation, by cumulatively adding this luck step by step by step by step, you can work from any degree of simplicity to any degree of complexity. All you need is enough time. So where's it come from? It's come from the gradual, incremental process of evolution by natural selection. It's taken for granted in the modern world of science that ancestral fish appeared in a primeval ocean, then crawled out of the water and became amphibians. Amphibians changed into reptiles and reptiles into mammals. Evolutionists claim that other reptiles shed their scales, grew feathers and took to the skies to become birds. But reptiles and birds are very different. Reptiles have no genetic information for wings or feathers. To change a reptile into a bird would require the addition of huge amounts of complex information. Darwin reasoned that, with a bit of luck, the accumulation of enough small changes could even turn reptiles into birds. Michael Denton says it cannot be done. One can quote lots of examples in the biological realm of things which seem, as it were, beyond the reach of that simple Darwinian mechanism. There's the things like the avian lung, there's the feather, there's the amniotic egg, bacterial flagellum. I mean, really a vast number of systems which have that unique watch-like sort of complexity that you find in nature, where in fact, to have the system functioning, you need A, B, C, D, so forth, all in place, interlocking like together, before the thing will function. It's very difficult to see how those sorts of things were, were arrived at undirected by undirected processes. I mean, you could take the feather, for example. The flight feather is a very complicated structure of tiny interlocking hooks and barbules, which hold the, um, the, the parts of the feather together. 
And uh, it's, it's these tiny little micro adaptations within the feather which give it its, um, it, which adapt the feather for flight. And uh, the Darwinian model of evolution requires that the intermediates are fully functional. And I can't imagine how you can get to such ends uh, th without having to sort of go through structures which are really not, not functional uh, in some sense, in some biological sense. Reptiles and birds also have totally different reproductive and respiratory systems. In reptilian lungs, air passes in and out of only one tube, which ends in tiny air sacs. But in birds, the air flows continually through the lungs in one direction, through a complex system of interconnected air sacs connected up with its hollow bones. Darwinists claim that reptilian lungs changed into birds' lungs through a lot of intermediate stages. But Michael Denton says half-formed lungs won't work because the transitional form cannot breathe. Any intermediate stage would result in extinction of the species. Well, the avian lung is an example, um, like the living cell or like the feather, of a, a highly complicated system, very, very involved, very complicated, which, as far as I can see, you can only conceive of it functioning as a, for um, a respiratory gas exchange. Um, if the whole current structure and order of it is in place. One of the toughest examples in nature of a highly complex system composed of a whole lot of interacting components, all of which must be there as they are in every single bird's lung before the thing would function. In the case of the avian lung, this is, for me, um, a very tough nut for Darwinian, Darwinists to crack. Because, I mean, I can't imagine how um, that sort of the lung and other, and, and other analogous things like it could come about as a result of the accumulation of small random changes. For simple life forms to evolve into more complex ones requires a massive input of new information. A microbe has about two books of 500 pages of complex coded genetic information on its DNA. A human has the equivalent of at least 1,000 books to transform a microbe into a human means adding a whole library of new information. So where does this new information come from? Professor Werner Gibb is a specialist in information theory and a director at the Federal Institute of Physics and Technology in Brunswick, Germany. He says the evolution of complex life forms from simpler ones by selection of lucky improvements is impossible because there is no source of new information. The biggest problem in evolution is the origin of information. Where is the information coming from? It is impossible to come from a simple uh, living being uh, to, to an elephant or to a human being. It needs uh, very much more information. And information cannot coming by a random process. Darwinists say the new information comes from genetic mutations that are passed on from one generation to the next. Genetic mutations are random errors, rather like mistakes made when copying a text. According to evolutionists, the most favorable of these mutations are preserved by natural selection. And it's the molecular genetics which finally provide the detailed evidence, the absolute knockdown evidence that nobody could possibly go against because the molecular evidence really shows with the detail of just like a sort of human text you can see the changing letters the changing words of the DNA which are in effect describing as generations go by describing the uh, anatomical changes which are all that Darwin himself were able was able to see Genetic mutations occur when genes are damaged, often by exposure to radiation or toxic chemicals. Some mutations have no effect, but most are detrimental and they're often fatal. Although most mutations are harmful, some mutations may be beneficial. Darwin has claimed that evolution occurs when these rare beneficial mutations accumulate through natural selection.
The Galapagos Islands are the showcase of evolution, where the unique wildlife is studied by international scientists. Here, tourists are shown the flightless cormorant as an example of evolution through beneficial mutation. The Galapagos cormorant has lost the genetic information for wings, and without wings, it can swim and dive quite well, which may be an advantage. Galapagos tour guides explain that because of this apparent advantage, the flightless cormorant left more offspring, and so, through natural selection, it survived, while the other birds with wings died out. Flightless cormorants are really degenerate mutants with a loss of information for making wings. All examples of mutations are actually loss of information, even the favourable ones. There is no new genetic information. Claimed examples of evolution and action are actually examples of variation within a kind. Antibiotic resistance, insecticide resistance, uh, peppered moths, all these are examples of rearrangement of existing genetic information or loss of genetic information. There's no new genetic information. I really do not believe that the Neo-Darwinian model can account for large-scale evolution. What they really can't account for is the build-up of information. It's uh, very improbable that uh, there can be many small steps of evolution, many small changes adding up to one large change. And not only is it improbable on the mathematical level, that is theoretically, but experimentally one has not found a single mutation that one can point at that actually adds information. In fact, every beneficial mutation that I have seen reduces the information, it loses information. Can you give an example of a genetic mutation or, 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 or an evolutionary process which ha can be seen to increase the information in the genome? Can you just stop one? I think. I'm recording. Okay. New information is coming from a random process. If you see a computer program, it needs a programmer. If you see a car, it needs a designer. If you see the biological information in the cells, then we must say, that is the right conclusion, it needs a creator who has made the program, the genes, to create the proteins, to create the organs. It is necessary that we have this. So we can say evolution is an impossible process.